Good morning and welcome to St. Clement's on this Good Friday. As we gather here today, we gather for a service of hymns and readings as we reflect on God's purpose for the cross. I invite you to stand for our first hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Today, he who hung the earth upon the waters is hung upon the cross. He who is the king of the angels He who wraps the clouds, the heavens in the clouds. The bridegroom of the church. the Son of the Virgin. We venerate your passion, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour, we thank you for bearing our griefs and carrying our sorrows. Draw us closer to the cross that we may be drawn closer to you, and to one another. Let us pray together. O merciful God, you have made all people, and you have nothing that you have made. You desire the death of sinners, but rather that they should turn and live. Have mercy on all who have not known you, or who deny the faith of Christ crucified. Take from them all ignorance, hardness of heart, and contempt of your word. And so fetch them home, blessed Lord, to your fold, that we may be made one flock under one shepherd, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, look with mercy on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and to be given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading. The reading is from Genesis 24, verses 1 to 14. After all this, God tested Abraham. God said, Abraham, yes, answered Abraham, I am listening. He said, take your dear son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Morah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I'll point out to you. Abraham got up early in the morning and saddled the donkey. He took two of his young servants and his son Isaac. He had spit wood for the burnt offering and he set out for the place God had directed him. On the third day he looked up and saw the place in the distance. Abraham told his two young servants Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I are going over there to worship. Then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and gave it to Isaac, his son, to carry. He carried the flint and the knife. The two of them went off together. Isaac said to Abraham, his father, Father, yes, my son, we have flint and wood, but where, where's the sheep for the burnt offering? Abraham said, Son, God will see to it that there's a sheep for the burnt offering. And they kept on walking together. They arrived at the place to which God had directed them. Abraham built, then arrived, oh, wait a moment. Abraham built an altar. He laid out the wood. Then he tied up Isaac and laid him on the wood. Abraham reached out and took the knife to kill his son. Just then an angel of God called to him out of heaven, Abraham, Abraham, yes, I'm listening. Don't lay a hand on that boy. Don't touch him. Now I know how fearlessly you fear God. You didn't hesitate to place your son your dear son, on the altar for me. Abraham looked up. He saw a man, a ram, caught by the horns in the thicket. Abraham took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham named that place God Uriah, which means God sees to it. That's where we get the saying, on the mountain of God he sees to it. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, and every offender who truly believes that woman from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, that the earth is Christ. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, that the faithful rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory and great things he has done. Taught us great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But greater and higher and greater will be our wonder, our rapture when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, to Jesus our Son. Please be seated. Let us pray. God of all, you gave your only begotten Son to take the form of a servant and to be obedient even to death on a cross. Give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that sharing in his humility, we may come to be with him in his glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Our second reading. A reading from Isaiah. Chapter 52. Just watch my servant blossom, exalted, tall, head and shoulders above the crown. But he didn't begin that way. At first, everyone was appalled. He didn't even look human, a ruined face, disfigured past recognition. Nations all over the world will be in awe, taken aback. Kings shocked into silence when they see him. For what was unheard of, they'll see with their own eyes. What was unthinkable, they'll have right before them. Who believes what we've heard and seen? Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? The servant grew up before God, a scrawny seedling, a scrubby plant in a parched field. There was nothing attractive about him, nothing to cause us to take a second look. He was looked down on and passed over, a man who suffered, who knew pain firsthand. One look at him and people turned away. We looked down on him, thought he was scum. But the fact is, it was our pains he carried, our disfigurements, all the things wrong with us. We thought he brought it on himself, 
that God was punishing him for his own failures. But it was our sins that did that to him, that ripped and tore and crushed him. Our sins. He took the punishment, and that made us whole. Through his bruises, we get healed. We're all like sheep who've wandered off and gotten lost. We've all done our own thing, gone our own way. And God has piled all our sins, everything we've done wrong, on him. On him. He was beaten. He was tortured. But he didn't say a word like a lamb taken to be slaughtered. And like a sheep being sheared, he took it all in silence. Justice miscarried, and he was led off. And did anyone really know what was happening? He died without a thought for his own welfare beaten bloody for the sins of my people. They buried him with the wicked, threw him in a grave with a rich man, even though he'd never hurt a soul or said one word that wasn't true. Still, it's what God had in mind all along, to crush him with pain plan was that he give himself as an offering for sin so that he'd see life come from it. Life, life and more life. And God's plan will deeply prosper through him out of that tra terrible travail of soul. He'll see that it's worth it and be glad he did it. Through what he experienced, my righteous one, my servant, will make many righteous ones. As he himself carries the burden of their sins. Therefore, I'll reward him extravagantly. The best of everything. The highest honours. Because he looked death in the face and didn't flinch because he embraced the company of the lowest. He took upon his own shoulders the sin of the many. He took up the cause of all the black sheep. Hear the word of the Lord. Bring our lives as a daily offering 
of worship to the servant king. Come sing his hands and his feet. The scars that speak of sacrifice, hands that flung stars into space. The cruel nail surrendered. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow. To bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. So let us learn how to serve, and in our lives and throne each other's needs to prepare. For it is Christ we're serving. This is our God, the servant king. But now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. Please be seated. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your people may have that mind that was in Christ Jesus, who emptied himself and took on the form of a servant and in humility became obedient even to death. For you have highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ, the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Our third reading. The reading is from John, chapter 10, verses 11, 14 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd puts the sheep before himself, sacrifices himself if necessary. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and my own sheep know me. In the same way, the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I put the sheep before myself, sacrificing myself if necessary. You need to know that I have other sheep in addition to those in this pen. I need to gather and bring them too. They also recognize my voice. Then it will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I freely lay down my life. And so I am free to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down of my own free will. I have the right to lay it down. I also have the right to take it up again. I receive this authority personally from my Father. Hear the word of the Lord. Oh, 
Son of God, given for me. My debt he pays, and my death he dies, that I might live. And so they watched him die, despised, rejected. But oh, the blood he shed flowed for me. Amazing love. Sacrifice the Son of God given for me. My debt he pays, and my death he dies, that I might live, that I And now this love of Christ shall flow like rivers to wash your guilt away. Please be seated. Let us pray. Loving Father, whose Son Jesus Christ has taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for him. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as he was the servant of all who gave up his life and died for us and yet lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our fourth reading. A reading from Luke. When they got to the place called Skull Hill, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Dividing up his clothes, they threw dice for them. The people stood there staring at Jesus and the ringleaders made faces, taunting he saved others. Let's see him save himself. The Messiah of God, ha. Huh. The Chosen, ha. Huh. The soldiers also came up and poked fun at him, making a game of it. They toasted him with sour wine. So you're the king of the Jews. Save yourself. Printed over him was a sign. This is the king of the Jews. <coughs> One of the criminals hanging alongside cursed him. Some Messiah you are, save yourself, save us. But the other one made him shut up. Have you no fear of God? You're getting the same as him. We deserve this. 
but not him. He did nothing to deserve this. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. He said, don't worry, I will. Today you will join me in paradise. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. 
Give us grace that we may always thankfully receive the benefits of his sacrifice and also daily endeavour to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our fifth reading. Our, <clears throat> our reading is for, from 1 Peter. This is the kind of life you've been invited into, the kind of life Christ lived. He suffered everything that came his way so that you would know that it could be done and also how to do it, step by step. He never did one thing wrong, not once said anything amiss. They called him every name in the book and he said nothing back. He suffered in silence, content to let God set things right. He used his servant body to carry our sins to the cross so we could be rid of sin, free to live the right way. His wounds became your healing. You were lost sheep with no idea who you were or where you were going. Now you're named and kept for good by the shepherd of your souls. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Let us pray. Grant, Lord, that as we have been baptised into the death of your dear Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, so by continually putting to death our sinful desires, may we die to sin and be buried with him. And through the grave and gate of death, may we pass to our joyful resurrection. For his sake, 
who died and was buried and rose again for us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Our sixth reading. The reading is from Romans chapter 6. So what do we do? Keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? I should hope not. If we have left a country where sin is sovereign, how can we still live in our old house there? Or didn't you realise we packed up and left there for good? That is what happened in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came up out of the water, we entered into the new country of grace, a new life, in a new land. That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we are lowered into the water, it is like the burial of Jesus. When we are raised up out of the water, it is like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a light-filled world by our Father so that we can see where we are going in our new grace, sovereign country. Could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ, a decisive end to that sin, miserable life, no longer at sin's beck and call. What we believe is this. If we get included in Christ's sin-conquering death, we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him. But alive, he brings God down to us. From now on, think of it this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue and you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Behold the wood of the cross on which the Saviour of the world was hung. Come, let us worship him. God sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. So let us bring the needs of the whole world to the foot of the cross of Christ. Son of God, you died for us with arms outstretched upon a cross. We pray for the world where you are crucified each day with the destitute, the oppressed, the dispossessed. Jesus Christ, crucified by us, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Son of God, you died for us, falsely accused, mocked and condemned to death. We pray for all who govern, those who make and administer law, for all who are denied justice. Jesus Christ, condemned by us, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Son of God, you died for us, denied, deserted, and rejected by those you loved. We pray for all who feel the hurt of rejected love, the pain of betrayal and abandonment. Jesus Christ, betrayed by us, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Son of God, you died for us to fulfill the words of the prophets and bring deliverance to all your people. We pray for the Jewish people, loved by God from ancient time. Jesus Christ, bruised for us, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Son of God, you died for us, to rescue your people from the power of sin. We pray for the church, for its clergy and ministers, for all who commit themselves to you. Jesus Christ, wounded for us, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Son of God, you died for us, to show your steadfast love for your people. We pray for all who live or work in this community, our families, our friends, and all whom we love. Jesus Christ, broken for us, in your mercy. Son of God, you died for us to bring healing, wholeness, and new life to your people. We pray for those in sickness, sorrow, grief, or pain, and for all who are close to death. Jesus Christ brought low for us in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Son of God, you died for us with arms outstretched upon a cross. We remember all who have been condemned to die, all who have died in pain and torment. With the women who loved you and ministered to you and with the disciple whom you loved, 
May we stand with you this day. At our life's end, forgive us our desertions and betrayals and stretch out your arms to receive us that with all your saints we may live with you in paradise. Jesus Christ, raised high for us in your mercy. Most merciful God, we commit ourselves to you and pray for the grace of a holy life. That with all who have died and are alive in Christ, we may come to the fullness of eternal life and the joy of the resurrection in Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please stand for our final hymn. Let us pray. O God, whose Son has shown the way of the cross to be the way of life, transform and renew our minds that we may not be conformed to this world, but may offer ourselves wholly to you 
as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus came to Amen. 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 Amen.